All right, today we've got two new functions and two vastly improved functions to go over in Power Apps. All right, so the idea here is that we're gonna walk through how the table function can now merge tables, yeah! And show you some really cool use cases for that one. That's the one I'm most excited for. Then we're gonna talk about JSON. It can now make things lay a little more flat, a little more Marie Kondo, kind of, you know, simplify your life. Um, then we also have encode uh, HTML. And so how that works, when you get all this hieroglyphic hieroglyphic, hieroglyphic, I don't know, whatever that word is, uh, characters on the screen. And then finally, we'll talk a little bit about the new Unicode feature, which, you know, just lets you get more fanciness in your app a little bit quicker there, right? Side button, then let's just switch over to my desktop and table. Instead of save the best for last, let's just start with the best and talk about the table function, right? So what they did with the table function is they gave us the ability to merge tables, add records to tables, and generally like work with those, right? So we get this question all the time, like, hey, how do I combine two tables? How would I do that? And it used to be this crazy for all stuff, especially in a lot of these scenarios, or there was another one where you had to do like this whole ungroup group thing. Like there was crazy ways to get tables and augment tables. And so what we wanna do now is show you how easy it is. Oh, this one is a home run. Okay, so what I got here is if we look, we have created two collections, right? So puppy collection, and remember this is gonna work with your tables if you're coming from a data source, we'll show a demo of that in a second, but you know, visualizing is a lot easier with collections, I think. So we've got a simple collection puppies. If we click here and then just hit the little drop down. So you can see, right, there's an age column, a color column, a dog name column, and a dog toy column, right? So notice I put dog name and dog toy here. We're doing this for a reason, right? So then the kitties collection, very similar, but if we look at this one, let's click right here, age and color are the same, but now we've got cat name, so instead of dog name, and we've got toy instead of dog toy, okay? So I wanted the tables to be same, but similar, but not exactly, right? Same, similar, I don't know, whatever, right? Okay, so what we can do now is if we want to combine those into one table, we can insert ourselves button here, and then we would do something like this. We would say clear collect, Cole combo. And so that would do, right, it would create a collection, right? We've done that before. And so here what we just we use a table function. And so now with a table, you could pass, or the table function, you could pass it a table. So we could say, hey, you got cold dogs, and then you got cold, or no, we don't want cold dogs, we want cold puppies. In my practice, it was dogs. And then cold kitties. So that function, now what it's going to do is take those two tables and merge them into one. And then all we're doing here with the collect is we're capturing. I wanted a way to like grab it so we could see it. So now if we press this button, boop. And now if we do cold combo, expand this out, it's a very easy way to visualize this. So look, they both had age, so all the ages went into one column. They both had color, so all the colors went into one. But then it said, hey, I got the dog name stuff, so we did the dog name, the dog toy. But for the cat name, because those columns, like it doesn't match columns up. Any columns that are unique are just gonna be added. So now this table, instead of having four columns like we had before, has six because it has the two that are in common, uh, age and color, and then the two names, cat name and dog name, that's four, and then the toy, five, and then the uh, dog toy, six. I said that backwards, but you get the idea, right? So six columns. So that's the first thing they can do here, right? It combines those. So what's neat about this though is you don't have to use a collection. I, I use a collection to visualize. And it also turns out apparently that's controversial that I save collections that way, but we won't talk about that. All right, so I want to throw a gallery on the screen real quick. And now what we're gonna do here for the gallery, right, we've always known that we could just give a gallery a table, right? Like, so we could just say, hey, here is Cole uh, Kitties. And then we've got the kitties, right? But what you can do now is you can take the table, remember the table would output a combined table. So we can say table Cole Kitties and then Cole Puppies. And if we do this, look at that. We don't have to save it in a collection ahead of time, right? It can do it on the fly, and now they're here. Now, if we were to go here and look at the actual um, columns, you know, so I just just changed the layout here to be title, subtitle, and body, right? So we have the four. And so if we said fields, oh, wait, title, subtitle, and body. Oh, there's three, I can't count. Anyway, so here we got cat name, dog name, and color. So that's why we, you know, if we go here, we got Ferguson, Garfield, cat. Uh, this one doesn't have a cat name. It has one under the color, which is the dog name. So it is able to see all of those and we would have those. Now, if you're thinking, but Shane, I need to like just show that a little bit cleaner. What you might do here is you come here and say, all right, I want you to use our friend Coalesce. And we'll say Coalesce, this item, cat name, comma, this item, dog name. So what does that do? 
So now what that does, that says use the first non-blank value. So for Ferguson the cat, it absolutely shows Ferguson, right? But when I got down here to Buddy, Buddy's a dog, so cat name was blank. So instead of showing the blank now, it says, oh, the first non-blank thing is dog name. Okay, so if you are combining these and you've got different columns, that would be one way to do it. Another way that we're not going to get into right now is you might take and say, hey, I want to use, I want to manipulate, right? Like, so then you could do the whole add columns, show columns, rename columns, right? I'll put some, a video up there if you wanted to kind of manipulate them all to be the same. But in this case, this would be a way to use them without uh, combining them. So that's a way to look at this. Now, another thing that we can do with this table function that is new is not only can we add two tables together, we could take instead and say, hey, I want to just add a record to this table, right? So we know what is our table. Okay, let's go here to Cole uh, Kitties real quick. We'll grab this, right? So we know that's what a record looks like for this. So copy. So we go here and say, hey, I want you to do Cole uh, Kittens, Cole Puppies, and then do a comma here. And now we can add just a record. So if we do this, and then we'll just change this to uh, extra, I don't know, right? Something like that. So now if we scroll down to the bottom, look, there is our extra. So this table now has all the kitties, all the puppies, all the columns that came with those two, and then manually on the fly, we added a record. And if this one say that we wanted to add another column called breed, right? We just say breed colon, and this is a cat. And now if we looked at our table, and the easiest way might to do that is just click here, right? There's our whole table. Look, now there's a breed column. It's blank for everybody except for that last one. But this, this is pretty profound, right? This ability to quickly, easily manipulate tables. Let me show you the place that I think people are going to use it the most to begin with. Okay. So we're going to, uh, over here, I've got a data source. I added my employees SharePoint list, right? You've all seen it before. It's got names, colors, uh, favorite color, email addresses, hire date, hourly wage. It also has a department that each person works in. So sometimes we need to drop down those departments, right? What would we do? We would insert ourselves a drop down here. And then in this drop down, what we're going to do is we would say something like this, right? We'd say distinct and then um, employees and then department. And so then this is going to be all the distinct departments, right? Awesome. But sometimes you want to take that drop down because you know you want to filter your employees using the drop down, right? You want to filter on the all. But you're like, how do I add an all to this? So this is where we used to do this crazy ungroup group or we do weird, weird stuff, right? Not anymore. That's a table, right? What's stopping me from just saying, hey, here, let's have a table here. And then let's just add to it one record for value and then all like so. Now look in the drop down. there's all. Oh, actually, I want all at the front. No big deal. We'll just cut this out. Control X. Go here. Paste it in, get rid of that. Boom. Now all is at the front. But Shane, I need these in alphabetical order. Awesome, right? Remember, this is still spinning out a table. So we just go right here inside, sort by columns, put our distinct back. I don't know why the new formula bar insists on deleting it, but it does. Sort by value. And now look, now we got all at the top. And then they're in alphabetical order from there. Even though accounting is alphabetically before all, because of the way we threw this table together. We did that, right? So this, I think, is one of the big things you're going to see from people going forward, right? Because now you've got that whole thing. And so if we changed our gallery here, right, let's just do this, boom. And so if we said, hey, show me employees, right, now it's all freaked out. Edit in the formula bar. We'll just say, uh, show me their department here, right? So now we've got all these employees. Oh, we'll change this one to first name so it makes more sense who they are. Okay. So then what would we do? We would just now be able to do filter employees where apartment equals, what was that, drop down to, let's move our cursor out of the way here, dot selected, dot value, or drop down to, dot selected, dot value equals all. Boom, right, so now we see if we hit play, we see everyone, if we change this to executive, we just see the executives, janitorial, we just see the janitors, back to all, we see them all. There you go. So we've talked about that before. I guess I'll leave you a video up there if that was a new pattern to you. But notice how much easier this was now because now we could just quickly use our regular distinct, add an all in there. Boom, we've got the data, right? This table function is really cool and opens up to a lot simpler code for you going forward.
All right, so that's enough about this one. Next function. Hey, before we jump into the other functions, make sure you're checking out my training, training.powerapps911.com. We've got live training, we've got on-demand training, we've got uh, university, which is a six-month program that includes a personal mentor for you. We even now have some co-pilot classes with a live co-pilot class coming up, right? If you're, if you're not engaged in AI yet, you're missing out. So anyway, go over to training.powerapps911.com and check it out. All right, let's make a new screen. Blank. So over here, the next one we look at is encode HTML. So we go here. What we can do is we can go here and say something like this: encode HTML. And you can do this. And so if we put in something like B and then bold, and then boom, what that's going to spit out for you, right, is nothing terribly exciting, but some really ugly looking stuff here. It is taking and it is encoding all those characters. So ampersand LT is actually the, uh, you know, the first little arrow there. And then the B is right there. And then ampersand GT, right? Less than, greater than, get it? With the little semicolon, that's the greater than. There's the word bold. And then the same thing on the way out. So sometimes when you're working with, especially like different APIs, different tools, sometimes instead of sending the actual bold like this, unencoded, what you want to do is you need to encode it because, you know, whatever the way the URL is getting generated, it's usually with URL generation or sometimes like the OData filters, things like that, you need it to do. I don't have a working example of like where I've ever needed this. I, I mean, I know I've needed it like in the past, but I don't have a example on the top of my head of where I've had to use this recently. But I want you to know this is here. So if you're ever like, hey, how do I get that crazy format? It is encode HTML and then you just pass it the HTML string. So remember like this would be something, you know, if we think about like our rich text editor here, rich text editor. So we know that if we use this and if we were just to go right here and say, you know, rich text editor one dot HTML text, it spits out that. But if you needed to encode that, right? So then you could just wrap that in the whole encode HTML like so and so. And so then now there is all of that crazy stuff. You might've seen that in SharePoint space a little bit as well. So not a super profound function, but it might be something that comes in handy. So I wanted to make sure you knew that that was there because it's one of those things that you don't need it until you need it, okay? So that's that one. The next one is also um, a little, you don't need it unless you need it type of thing. That's gonna be our friend JSON. So if you insert a text label here, Kind of pull it down here. We'll set that font to 25 again just to make this easy to read. So if you do JSON square bracket yes, no, maybe, right? We know that this format makes a table, right? We've seen that before. That is shorthand no, uh, notation to make a table in Power Apps. And so if we turn that into JSON, it gives us a JSON representation of that table, right? Look, there's a square bracket, and then there's a record for value yes, value no, value no, and then you close your square bracket. Okay, so working with JSON, pretty normal. And if you're like, whoa, J J JSON, what? JSON is something we should be comfortable with in the Power App space. If you're not, I'll put another link to video. with the third one now? I'm video plugging apparently today. Who knows? But anyway, JSON is something you should be comfortable with. And so what all they've done today is they've made a little change to this so that now you can flatten that, right? So this is how that would come out. But if you did a comma here, you can now say JSON format. The new one here is flatten values table. So now look, when it gets that JSON of this, instead of turning it into a Power Apps table, it is flattening that, right? It's making it nice and smooth, getting rid of the clutter in your life, right? That was a whole Marie Kondo joke I tried earlier, probably failed, but I tried. So now it's just yes, no, maybe. If you're a JavaScript person, this is what you would expect. Um, so this is not one that I have ever thought, man, I wish it could do that. <laughs> That's okay, I don't have a JavaScript background, but just add this into your arsenal, right? Okay, if I'm ever pulling in JSON and I don't want the table to come in as an actual table, I literally just want the flattened text like this, that's where you're gonna do this. So this is whole back to that, you know, playing shenanigan games with JSON, this is where you're going to have to do that if it comes up, okay? Not super common, but plant the seed, know in the back of your head when it, you do start fighting JSON, Jason, I <laughs> like the killer with them thing now. Uh, then you have that showing up. One more, also super easy. So let's just insert one label again. I guess I should have copied his labels. We'll set this one to 25. And so what this one is, is now they've given us the ability to do Unicode characters, right? We've always had the ability to use the char function or car function, right? I've always been able to do like car 99 like that. And like, so that's the letter C, right? And so we use that a lot of times. We use car 13 to create line breaks dynamically. 
We've done that. That's using the ASCII codes for things. But nowadays, now we don't only have the ASCII codes. We also have the Unicode. And so that is for some of those fancier things. So let's try something like this. We'll just jump up here. We'll just add it to this, right? We'll say ampersand. And then we can do uni character or uni char, right? And then you give it the, the number annotation. And so you can see that like the little guy with the halo, right? That's me with the halo. No. <laughs> or buddy the dog here. So one, two, eight, five, one, nine. That is that. That is that, right? So we also know another way we can add those today is we can do the windows key and period. And then we could add, you know, the guy in the cloud face. I don't know what this is, is but I've been using this one a lot lately. All right, so we can just add those directly and then close off our um, things. And so that's another way to pull those in. So it's just giving you more options, right? More ways to pull in characters. Now, if you're thinking, Shane, how do I know what a Unicode is? So what I did is I went over to this website. I don't know. I searched for Unicode characters. And so you can just see that all of them are here. There's websites full of these. I asked the chat GPT earlier. I've asked Copilot. They can all produce these codes for me. But like if we want to grab the little penguin here, right? So we'd be like, oh, I want a penguin in my app. So we could just copy that 128039. We jump back over here. And so we would just replace the whatever this was with blah, 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 39. And now we have a penguin in our app. Okay. So that is a way that you can do this. Also, as part of playing with this, I discovered that if you're getting, sometimes you get the, uh, the decimal number of these, other times you might get the hex. So if you get that, right, there is a function in Power Apps called hex to des, hex to des, I don't know, hex to decimal number to number, uh, to decimal. So this turns 1F929 into 129321. And so then you could pass that to our friend Unico character, right? Once again, the silly thing deletes that from me. Boom, boom, boom. And so then now we've got the guy with the stars. So there is a function for that. I did not know hex to decimal was there. There's also a decimal to hex. So if you need to go the other way, so uh, that is possible. But just keep in mind the unit character, it needs the decimal representation. So if you got it the other way, you would need to account for that. So <laughs> that that's the new phone stuff, right? Hopefully you find this interesting. I, you know, I think the table one like is something I'm going to put into use today in my apps. Um, you know, these other ones, the uh, JSON stuff, the encoding, the HTML, and the uh, the Unicode character thing, right? Like, that is all great. Those are all Power Apps functions that we need to have in our back pockets. We need to know they're there because when they show up the need for, we want to be able to spring into action, but they're probably not going to affect your day to day. So questions, comments, leave them below. Always happy to answer those. And with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day.